Great to have you with us today. And today our message is titled, From Faithful to Fruitful. And I'd like to start off with the scripture is Genesis 41, 52. And it says, And the name of the second he called Ephraim, for God has made me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. Let's pray. Father, thank you for today. God, thank you as we lean in on all that you have for us today. God, we're open to hear what the Spirit of the Lord would say to us today. And so, God, we thank you for the spirit of revelation. We thank you for the spirit of illumination and the spirit of transformation, God, that as we hear this message, we will not be the same. God, we give you all the honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, we have been in an amazing study so far learning about being fruitful, that God called us to be fruitful, multiply, and take dominion, and that Jesus said, I want you to bear fruit, and I want you to have fruit that remains. And so that's our goal, is not just to live and not just to, to you know, serve the Lord. Yes, serve the Lord, but serve the Lord with fruitfulness so that others can see what God is doing in our lives, and they can pick of the fruit that's going on so we can minister to others and lead others to Christ. And so we've learned about love, joy, and peace. Those have been great. Now today, guess what? patience, long-suffering. Ah, that word alone just like gives us the jitters, doesn't it? Like who wants to be patient? Who wants to like stand in line at DMV and go, yes, Lord, give me patience today, right? But patience, you know, I thought the best way for us to really dive into patience was to really study the life of somebody that we could see the stages of his life unfold, and that's the life of Joseph. And so today, we're going we're gonna to lean in on the life of Joseph and see how we see what God gave him, a dream, and the journey he went through, and how God, you know, used this whole entire journey to lead him from faithfulness to fruitfulness. And so, you know, I'll, I'll start by just asking you, what dream has God given you? You know, what do you do? When, when you know that God has, has planted something in your heart, that God has given you vision, that you know that God has, has other things in store for you, greater things, but what do you do right now in the midst of it? And so number one, what do we do? We work through the why. Work through the why. Genesis 39 is where we're going to pick up Joseph's story, verses 2 through 5. And it says, The Lord was with Joseph. And he was a successful man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And so Joseph found favor in his sight and he served him. And then he made him the overseer of the house. And over all that he had put under his authority, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord and all that, the ha that had in the house and was in the field, Genesis 39. And so here we see that Joseph, Joseph was the second son. Um, he was the 11th son of Jacob. And Jacob had many, many sons, but Joseph was his favorite. And you know, Joseph, his name alone means, to, means multiply, means many. And so Joseph here he was, and he shared his dream. He had this dream that, that God would place him over his brothers would come and would bow to him. And he said, guess what, guys? I've had a dream. You guys are going to come and bow at my feet. And guess what his brothers did? Exactly that. They just laughed at him and said, you are so crazy, dude. Like, seriously? Like, no way. And so they went on with their life, but, but Joseph's father kept it in his heart. And he remembered what Joseph had said. And so one day when Joseph was out and about serving his brothers, his brothers decided, hey, we're going to kill him. And one of his brothers stepped up and said, no, let's not kill him. Let's sell him. Let's make some money off of him. Hey, why not? And so they made some money off him, sold him off, and here he goes into this foreign land. He went from being a son, a beloved son, and now he went into now being a servant and a slave into a foreign, foreign country. And so he goes into this foreign land, and God exalts him even there. As the scripture that I've just read to you shows that God exalted him even in the midst of that. 
And you know, how do you have a dream? And you know where God's going to take you, but then here Joseph gets sold out to his brothers. He's gone into this foreign land. I'm sure, he, I'm sure he's telling God, God, this is not quite the dream that you gave me. This doesn't really match what I intended. I thought, you know, we're just going to, you know, go through life. I'm going to serve my dad. Everything's going to be great. And then my brothers are going to come and kneel to me, and everything's going to be grand. I didn't know, like, you're going to strip me of everything, and I'm going to go over here. And, and what did Joseph do? He decided that I am going to continue to work through the why. We've got to decide that even though we don't understand the why, we may not understand the process. We may not understand why all the things are lining up the way they are. But we've got to decide that no matter what, I'm going to work through the why. You know, Joseph here shows us that he was a good administrator. Even in his why, he was a good administrator. He was hardworking. God was with him and made him to prosper. God blessed the master through him. And God had made him in charge of his whole master's affairs. And so what did Joseph do? Joseph said, okay, even in this season, it may not be where I see myself being. It may not be at the end result, but even in this, I'm going to serve you, God, with all that I have. I'm going to serve the master. I'm going to serve who, who you've placed over me. I'm going to be responsible, and I'm going to do well, because patience equals capacity. You know, the greater our patience is the greater our capacity. You know, I believe that God is growing us through our seasons of patience, through our seasons of why, through our seasons of not understanding. It's almost like, you know, have you ever been like, you know, played musical chairs, right? And you're running around, and what, it, what happens to the music? You stop the music, and everyone has to hurry up and find a seat. And then they're like, okay, we're ready to go again. And they play the music, and you're running around trying to find your seat again. And what happens in life sometimes is you almost feel like the music's going. Everything's great. We're going, going. And all of a sudden, don't you feel like sometimes there's those pause moments when the music just stops? And you're like, well, what do I do now? And this was Joseph. It was like the music was going. And all of a sudden, he was sold. All of a sudden, he found himself in a new land with a new, with a new master. He had to find his place in that moment. And we've got to trust that God can still find us a place even in those moments. God still has a place for you even right now. I think so many times we're so focused on the end result that we forget about what God has entrusted us with right now. We're so focused on saying, yes, but God, you, uh, you promised me a husband. Yes, but God, you promised me six children. Yes, but God, you promised me a big ministry. Some of you are saying yes, right, to six. Not me. Y'all go right ahead, you know. <laughs> multiply. <laughs> Take dominion. But, you know, but, but what we're saying is, well, I believe God is asking us, but what are you doing with what I've given you right now? How are you stewarding well what's right in front of you? You know, I was with a great pastor a couple, um, a couple months ago. We were in Louisiana with pastors Jacob and Michelle and they're great pastors leading our lives. And Pastor Michelle, one thing that she said is she said, Honey, make sure that your head, your heart, your hands are all focused in the same direction. And I think so often we can find that our, our, our heart is over here, but our hands are over here. And how many of you know it's hard to drive on the freeway and you're going this way and yet your eyes are over here? You know, and I think so many times... We're so, we're so hopeful about what's on the other side. We're so hopeful, oh God, if only, if only you'd bless me like that relationship or if you'd only bless my home like that. And he's like, but what do I have right in front of you? What do I have right here? Focus on that. Put it into, put it into motion. Get this going right here in front of you. And guess what? God will multiply you right where you're at. Because number two is sharing your gift with the great. Sharing your gift with the great. In Genesis chapter 39, it says, Then Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison. So let's pause here. So here we see that he's over everything. But what we don't know is what happened between the last portion that I read and here is, oh, yeah, by the way, the master's wife chased him down and wanted him to sleep with her. And so Joseph said, no, not doing that. And so Joseph now was put into prison because of his integrity. Maybe you found yourself going, God, you know, why am I being, you know, an outcast because of my integrity? 
Well, let's see how Joseph handled it. And it says, Then Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were confined. And he was there in the prison. And it says, But the Lord was with Joseph. Come on, let's say that. But the Lord was with Joseph. Praise God. He was with Joseph, and he showed him mercy, gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand. Oh, over all the prisoners who were in the prison, whatever they did, it was his doing. The keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under Joseph's authority because the Lord was with him. And whatever he did, the Lord made him to prosper. Do you realize that even in the prison, even in the place where we're like, God, nobody can see me. God, nobody knows what I'm doing down here. Where's the accolades? Nobody can recognize what's taking place. God can still be with you and cause you to prosper, cause you to prosper. And what I love is that even in the prison, Joseph shared his gift. Joseph excelled. Joseph, Joseph was entrusted because he said, I'm not just going to be down here. You know, patience is not doing nothing. It's working while we're waiting. That's what patience is. Patience is working while we're waiting. It's giving God our all. It's saying, okay, God, if you've got me here in the prison, what can I do here? What are the people here that I could reach? And you know, Joseph began to, to minister to the people in the prison. And guess what? God gave him an opportunity to use his gifts, and he took it. I wonder if, if, we, will, if we will take the opportunity that God gives us to use our gifts, even in those why moments. I wonder if we'll lean in and say, God, maybe nobody will ever know what I'm doing here. Nobody may never ever see it, but I know that you've asked me to lean in and do this, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my gift. God used his, his gift to, to minister to the cup um, bearer and the baker, and guess what? Years later, it served him well because he ended up being called back out of prison because they remembered what Joseph had done for them. You know, and, and I think we have to ask ourselves, how are we going to use the gift that God has given us? Proverbs 24.10 says, if you faint in the day of adversity, how small is our strength? How small is our strength? If only we can stand when it's great, then how much are we trusting God? If we can only press in, in when we can see, how much are we trusting God in the moments we can't see? Trusting God in that, you know what, I can't, I can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, but God, I know you can. So I'm just going to trust you. I'm going to follow your lead. I'm going to follow your prompting, knowing that you go before me. God, you go before me today. You go before me with my family. You go before me, Lord, with my finances. I know, Lord, that you, I'm, I can trust you in this. You know, your faithfulness today produces fruitfulness tomorrow. The trials we face today reveal the character we have tomorrow. I believe that God is developing character in us through these moments. These are the moments when we go, God, I've never experienced your love the way I experienced your love. Why? Because we had a pause moment, an opportunity for us to really go, all I can do is lean in on your love. All I can do is lean in on your strength. All I can do is lean in on your faithfulness and say, God, today, great is your faithfulness. Your mercies are new every morning. You know, I think back to when we first started, when we first planted, you know, the church. We had lots and lots of seeds. And, um, you know, we had the, our offices were at our house. And um, wake up in the morning, good morning, how's everybody? People <laughs> would spend the night working at our house and... We'd walk out, be like, oh, did you make coffee yet? Okay, great, thanks. Yeah, let's, let's have a cup. And, um, you know, answering the phones, ah, thanks for calling Destiny. Oh, you need somebody to help you? Sure, just a sec. Hi, how can I help you? Yeah, good to, yeah, great to help you, you know. And then what are we doing? We're, we're printing bulletins and doing everything we can. What were we doing at that moment? We're planting seeds. And you know, the posture of planting is usually down here, isn't it? You know, you're down here. You're planting, you're getting it down here, your hands are getting dirty in the mud. I'm on my knees, not the best place to be, getting my hands dirty. You know, I'm over here, oh wait, gotta go over here and do this one now. 
doing the water. What am I doing? I'm, I'm in a totally different position when I'm planting. It's a little dirty. It's not exactly where I intended to be. This is what we see with Joseph. Joseph is in a place where he's, he's planting. He's getting his, his hands dirty. He's like, okay, God, if this is where you have me to be, I'll do it. And then what happened years later is we begin to see the fruitfulness. And when you think about fruit, fruit that you pick is so different than your planting. Planting is down here dirty. Picking is, hey, it's ready. Let's get it. You get it off the tree. Here it goes. It's right here. It's ready for the taking. And so often, I think we're like, if it's not right here, where I can grab it, and it's in my hand, and I've got it, we're like, it must not be for me, God. I'll just pass that thing up. And we miss opportunities to plant and to sow and to dig and to get our knees dirty because we're, it's, we almost expect that God's going to give us everything just like this. Like, okay, God, if that's the dream, then just wake me up tomorrow and I'll go pick it from the tree. It must be ready for me. But you know what happens? Not only the fruit comes ready, but our lives become ready. You know what God did through Joseph during those years is he said, no, I want to teach you. I want to teach you how to love people that are in the prison. I want to teach you how to, how to work through your situation. I want to teach you forgiveness so that when you meet your brothers, you're going to be able to forgive them because of the process that you've been through. Yeah. You had to forgive the, the master. You had to forgive the wife. You had to forgive all those people. So now when you go in front of your brothers, you're going to be able to forgive your brothers. Wow. You know, and sometimes we're like, we miss. We miss that opportunity. And, and then we wonder why we weren't ready. Why I'm not ready to, to forgive my brothers yet. Well, the, have you forgiven Potiphar's wife? Have you forgiven the people along the way? You know, and that's the thing. When, when the Holy Spirit begins to nudge us and he's saying, now's the time. Start with the small. Do this now. He's preparing us for the fruit to be picked. But it's, it's saying, God, I'm going to lean in on you. Hebrews 12, 11 says, now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Anybody experienced pain? Yes, every hand goes up. Nevertheless, afterwards, it yields a peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. James 1.4 says, The man who mastered patience is a perfect, fully mature man, lacking nothing. Do you know that God calls us perfect and lacking nothing when we have obtained patience? Isn't that amazing? I mean, wouldn't you think that that's somebody who's maybe full of love or full of peace or something like more joyful? No, but it's somebody who's actually attained patience is who God says, you're complete. You're lacking nothing because you have learned to trust me. I think it's the highest form of worship is to be able to say, God, I'm, I'm going to trust you in this season. I'm going to be patient. I think patience is, is teaching us to love God more to understand his character more, to understand who he is. Hebrews 6.12 says, Faith and patience inherit the promise. And I love that. It's not just faith and it's not just patience, but both together inherit the promise because the power of patience is the proof that we trust the process. And number three is be promoted with plenty. Genesis 41 39 through 41 says, Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Inasmuch as God has shown you all this, there is no one as discerning and wise as you. Remember the butler, the baker, the, the cupper, they, they remembered Joseph and said, Wait, you had a dream too, Pharaoh? I remember Joseph interpreted it for me. And so, so he came up and was stood before him. And so here he starts to interpret it. And Pharaoh says, as God has shown this to you, you will be over my house. You, I will place you over my house, and the people shall be ruled by you according to your word. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. Why? Because he had learned, I can master the prison. So God, God can trust him in the prison, so God can trust him in the palace. And I think when, when we have to ask ourselves, have we mastered where we're at right now? Because Joseph mastered the prison, and so God could trust him in the palace. 
And I think we have to say, God, trust me. Thank you for trusting me with the people that you have placed into my life right now. I believe that every week, every day, God brings people into our lives that he's saying, please, reach my kids. Reach my kids. I'm bringing you my sons and daughters. People have been praying for them. I'm going to send them your way so that you can, you can speak love into them, so that you can speak life into them. Please, please, you be the hands and feet. We're partnering together. And I wonder how many times we will lean in and say, yes, God. Yes, God, I will. I choose to say yes to you. Let us master those moments so that when God exalts us, he will still keep the glory. And, you know, in that position, Joseph's brothers were brought back before him. And Joseph had the opportunity to forgive them, to feed them, to bless them. You know, it was a famine that drew them in to that, into that position. You know, I wonder how many times God has set up some people to have famines in their own lives in order for that we could be, an, uh, we can say, no, I have something for you. I have faith for you. I have grace for you. I have love for you. I have, I have an answer for you. His name is Jesus. I have a place for you to come. come. Come with me to the house of the Lord. Let's walk through life together. There's going to be people that have famines in their lives that, are, that have nothing. And we have an opportunity to speak into them. And going back to the scripture that I opened with, I love this. Genesis 41, 52. And the name of the second his second son, that during this time, God restored to him. God gave him, he married and he had two sons. And the second son, he, he named him Ephraim. For God has called me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. I believe that even in our dismay, even in our despair, that word affliction actually even means depression. Even in our moments when we're like, God, I mean, don't you hear me? Don't you see me? Don't you see what's going on? I believe that God can cause us to be fruitful in the very place where, where it caused dismay. I believe those, those broken relationships, God can restore them, and he can cause us to be fruitful there again. You know, we never know why we experience tragedy, why we experience tough times, why we experience all these things, but yet for the glory of God, that God's name will still yet be glorified even in this and in verses 53 and 54 it says when the seven years of plenty which were in the land of egypt ended and the seven years of famine began joseph had said the famine was in all the lands but the land of egypt there was bread and and jo god exalted joseph to be able to be over all the land and he was the, the man of influence that was able to be out there distributing the, the food to everybody. Why? Because he knew, hey, in these seven years, we've got to hold back. There's a, there's, there, there may be a lot right now. It looks like it. But what did he do? He prepared for the famine. And I believe God gives us strategy. I believe God gives us wisdom. I believe God gives us insight, whether you're a business owner or in your homes, in our families. God gives us insight, and we can pray, God, give me the strategy to lead our family. Give me the strategy to lead in our businesses to go above and beyond. God can cause us to see into the future. He'll show us the future before it even happens. And I believe that, that th through this message, where God is reminding us, hey, even in, in the moments of, of our whys and while we're walking through with patience, let's lean in on God and all that he has for us and let's work through it, trusting that, God, I'm going to be fruitful right where I'm at because I know in my faithfulness you will cause me to be fruitful. Amen. Amen. Come on. Let's give God praise. Praise for those moments. So good. And, you know, I want to all, always end with an opportunity to, to let you have an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Maybe, maybe hearing today, maybe it's reminded you of, man, you know, I've heard about Christ, and maybe I once had a relationship with him, but it's now time for me to dive in and to know him one-on-one -on -one for my life today. And if you'd like to receive Jesus, is there anybody here in this room that would like to receive Jesus? We're not here to embarrass you, but just to pray with you. If there's anybody, would you like to raise your hand? And we will include you in this prayer. 
Okay, so everybody's saved in this room. Awesome. Well, we're going to um, also extend it to our online viewers. So we, if you would like to receive Jesus, would you take a moment and repeat this prayer after us? Dear Jesus, I recognize that I'm a sinner. I'm in need of you. Thank you for dying for me. I ask you, come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. I choose to follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Come on, let's give him praise today. Awesome, awesome. Thank you for joining us today. We pray that if you receive Jesus, that you'll take a moment and, and let a pastor know and take a moment and join one of your local churches. Thank you so much for joining us, and I pray that you are fruitful this week in patience. Praise the Lord. Come on, girls, give God a hand clap of praise.